You're already on camera. What are you talking about? Okay, good morning, everybody. I, ah, I got Chabelle and, and, uh, and Joseph here. Okay, Joe, today is the, uh, uh, today we commemorate the uh, passion of uh, St. John the Baptist. So, um, uh, instead of telling, instead of reading the gospel, uh, we'll let, we'll let uh, Joseph here and, and Chabelle tell the story. Okay, come on, Joe. Come on, come on, come on. Come back here. Come on now. So, okay, so, what happened to John the Baptist? Okay. Where do you start? Okay, let's answer my questions. Who is John the Baptist? Cousin of Jesus. The cousin of Jesus. Okay, and so what was his role? Chabelle, come in. What was his role in the life of Jesus? What did, what did he do for Jesus? Well, um, yeah. Uh, uh, prepared, uh, yeah, he come prepared here, come, come, come. He prepared? For, uh, okay. Like repentance, he told them to repent and stuff. Okay, in order to prepare for the coming of Jesus, mm -hmm. right? Okay. So fast forward, fast forward. How did he die? Because that's the feast today. Um, or that's what we commemorate today. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So there was a party. <laughs> what party? Whose party? The party of Herod's birthday. Okay, okay. Party okay. of Herod's birthday. It okay, was yeah. birth. Uh, it was Herod's birthday. Just, just tell it straightforwardly. <laughs> okay, so he had this girl do a dance. <laughs> Who's that girl? I don't know. Oh, his daughter. His daughter. Okay, the daughter of Herodias. Okay. And then, um. So he said that he was going to give anything, anything to the daughter because he liked the dance so well. Mm -hmm. okay. And so... Including half of what? Oh, including half of his kingdom. Okay, yeah. Wow. Would you imagine that? Right? Okay, wow. Wow. <laughs> okay, and then, and then, and then, and then, and then, and then. And then, then um... Mm. So, okay, so, after that... And then, so, um, the daughter of Herodias went up to her mother mm. and said, What do I want? Mm. Ask the mother what she could ask Herod for, right? Okay, and, and then, then the, the head of mother, John the Baptist. mother said, The head of John the Baptist. So the girl went back to Herod and she said, The head of John the Baptist. <laughs> and then he was like, Uh, mm, mm, mm. okay. Head of John the Baptist. Okay. And so, then John the Baptist was like beheaded in prison. Okay, okay, very good. Let me clap for Jojo. Let me clap for Jojo. And what about Chabelle? What what is your part in the story? Okay, now let's talk about Okay, here we go. Now, you better behave, okay? Okay. So, John the Baptist was a very Strong man, right? Strong man, and that's what we're going to comment today. The virtue of fortitude. Eh? The virtue of fortitude, the virtue of strength. Eh? The virtue of fortitude. Um, so let me see. I, I don't know if we can uh, review catechism here. The virtue of fortitude is what kind of virtue? It's part of one of the four. Car. Cardinal. Okay, Jacob, right? The four cardinal virtues, right? The four cardinal virtues are? What are they? Uh, what are they? One of them is fortitude. One of them is fortitude, okay. The other, one, other three would be? Prudence. Then? Well, okay, well, well we, 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 we have to get going. Huh? Ay, ay, ay. Okay, justice and temperance, right? For prudence, fortitude, justice, and temperance, the four cardinal virtues. Now, why are they called cardinal virtues? They're called cardinal because the word cardinal comes from the word cardo in Latin, meaning hinge. It means hinge. Okay? So this is catechism uh, 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 lesson for everybody. It means hinge. Hinge means, well, like the hinge of a door. It's where the door hangs from, right? 
or the cabinet hinge. It's where the cabinet hangs from. Okay? So, the four cardinal virtues are hinges of or from where other virtues hang. That is why they're very important. They're very important because other virtues, the other virtues that we live in our lives, okay, in order to help us develop ourselves and become saints, those virtues are all clinging on to these four great cardinal virtues. And one of them, one of them is fortitude. Fortitude. And fortitude is very important because it's about uh, the virtue that strengthens strengthens our irascible appetite and the will, right? Well, this irascible appetite, and you'll learn that more uh, later. I can explain that. It's a little bit more of a philosophical concept. Uh, but just understand it for now as the strengthening of the will. Right? The strengthening of the will. The will which uh, enables us to pursue, to pursue, to keep doing, to keep uh, 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 striving for good things that are difficult to obtain. See? That is what fortitude, that's what fortitude uh, helps us to do. That's the virtue of fortitude that helps us to aspire for, to obtain difficult good things. The good things that are difficult to obtain and pursue. We need fortitude as a virtue to obtain those. Hey, we need a virtue of fortitude to obtain those. Can we give examples of difficult things, that good difficult things that we need to aspire for and do? Huh? What is that? Oh, waking up in the morning. Okay. Waking up in the morning is a good thing to do and it's difficult to do. We need the strength to do it. Yes. No, not losing temper. Not losing your temper. Yeah. Okay. That's one, that's one good thing that we need to also practice. What else? What else? Do your schoolwork, right? Studying. Studying is also not, not a very easy thing to do, and we need fortitude for that. What else? Huh? Doing your household chores also, right? <laughs> uh oh, God bless you. What else? Huh? What else? What about praying? What about going to Mass as we do every day, right? What about not, not to be distracted at Mass? That's right, see? So there are many of these, many of these good things, right? That we pursue every day, every day of our lives, right? All of which, all of which lead, all of which lead us to the biggest good, which is? Which is heaven. You're right, Mia, right? Which is to go to heaven and to attain God, right? To be with God forever in heaven. So, but being in heaven is not going to be just one, uh, 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 like one big effort that will happen all of a sudden, right? Attaining heaven happens every day, every day of our lives. We keep trying and trying to do uh, good things, pursuing good things, okay? And for that, we need the virtue of fortitude. We need the strength of the will, the willpower. This is what, in ordinary language, people will call it willpower, right? But, but for those, uh, 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 in, for for those people who just keep invoking willpower, for them it's like brute force. It's like, rah, I'm gonna do this. Oh, I'm gonna do this, right? Brute force. For us. Catholics, we understand better. It is not a question of brute force. It is a question of the virtue of fortitude. Okay? The virtue of fortitude. And just like any virtue, <laughs> just like any virtue, fortitude is also a fruit of grace. Right? Virtues are a fruit of grace. Virtues are... Uh, 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 the the working of grace of God, the grace of God in our souls. See? That is why these virtues come with our baptism. That is why these virtues come with our confirmation. Right? They are they are supernatural virtues, part of the supernatural graces that we get through the sacraments. So for us Catholics, especially, fortitude is not just a matter of brute force. Right? It is a matter of 
the will being ordained to what is good, pursuing a good no matter how difficult it is, but counting on the grace of God to do it. Okay? Not so much just on our own strength. Not so much just because of our machismo. Not because we are physically strong. Not because we are we have brute force. That's why it's called brute force or will power. No, not because of that, but rather because we rely on the grace of God for these virtues. Okay, so St. John, St. John the Baptist was one very good example of fortitude. Right? Because number one, could you imagine what St. John did? He dared go against the king. He dared go against an established powerful authority, no less than Herod. <laughs> he went against the king, telling him what? Telling him, it is wrong for you to take your brother's wife to be your own. That was really a big shocker right? for, for Herod. To be told by somebody who seems to be really a nobody as far as the uh, society, his social standing in society is all about, right? He was really nobody, but God used him to correct Herod, to try and correct Herod, to try and speak the truth, right? And Herod was, uh, was a little disturbed. By, by that, by what John is telling him. He somehow wanted to listen to John the Baptist and because he, he admired John the Baptist. He, he saw him as a prophet, right? Uh, uh, so he somehow admired John the Baptist, but, 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 yeah, there was that struggle in him and he was, uh, he was a weakling to begin with. You know? So he ended up uh, succumbing to, uh, to the whims of, uh, his brother Philip's wife, Herodias, and um, okay, who asked for the head of John the Baptist because Herodias doesn't want to hear the truth. She didn't want to hear anything about the truth and abide by the truth. So in order to silence the truth, which some people do, right? They want to silence the truth, silence the opposition, just kill him. Well, that's what they did to John the Baptist, to silence the truth, right? But John was strong. John stood his ground and he didn't waver. And even in the face of death, he still spoke the truth and said what needed to be said. So this is what makes martyrs martyrs. Eh? Martyrdom is a demonstration, an expression of fortitude. Eh? Martyrs died for their faith. They stood their ground. They did not waver. Right? And this is actually what's been happening even in the Oh, God bless you. Right? Even in in these countries nowadays which we have been hearing uh, being overtaken by ISIS and and all of those uh, Muslim extremist groups, right? What were they being asked to do? They were being asked to renounce their faith. And if not, they would get killed. Those people who chose martyrdom over freedom experienced the working of fortitude in their lives and they and they expressed their fortitude and they died for the faith those guys are martyrs see? those guys are martyrs so we have to admire um, these brothers of ours brothers and sisters of ours in the faith who experience plenty of these persecutions and it's happening all over the world Right? The persecutions of Christians, of Catholics is happening all over the world. And those who stand their ground, who keep the faith, who speak the truth and defend the truth are expressing this virtue of fortitude. They're living up to the virtue of fortitude. Okay, well, why don't we look into some examples of this okay? uh, and, how, and how fortitude uh, can, uh, can be lived. Number one, I think, which is important for everybody here around this table. Okay. Number one is we always have to tell the truth. Okay. Telling the truth like John the Baptist did is one of the hardest things to do. But it is something we have to do as a way of living the virtue of fortitude. And fortitude will help us tell the truth all the time, no matter what the consequence might be. Right? Even if we know that we're going to suffer some consequence for telling the truth, we have to tell the truth, right? Uh, we have to have the strength 
in the face of adversity when people go against us because we are doing something good okay? there's such a thing as uh, people opposing us for doing what's good you know <laughs> and I think we also have had experience of this even in our own uh, communities right uh, when when you're doing good there are always some people who will try to bring you down right because they get convicted by the good things that you do and uh, because of that they will try to bring you down okay eh? anyway uh, I think you know what I'm talking about right so <laughs> oh and then a third example will be patience who patience so hard to live patience right it's so hard to live the virtue of patience. But you see, patience is one of those virtues that hang on fortitude. <clears throat> see? See, that's why it's a hinge. It hangs on fortitude. Why? Because you need strength to be patient. To be patient about what? Yeah, to be patient about the shortcomings of other people. But there's also one other side of patience which we oftentimes forget. And what is that? Patience on ourselves. Because many times with our striving to, to, be, to be faithful, striving to be good, we can, we can get frustrated with our own efforts and we just give up. Okay? We shouldn't do that. Right? With fortitude, we should keep on uh, uh, doing what is good for ourselves. We have to keep on trying to fight and live the virtues. And we just have to try to have more and more patience with our own shortcomings. Right? Okay, another, another virtue that hinges on fortitude is perseverance, right? Perseverance. Have we heard this before? Huh? What does it mean for you? Um, okay, so to live in the state of grace till death, okay? the virtue of perseverance. In other words, it's to be constant. To try to live constantly within the grace of God, right? To persevere, to keep doing the same thing, the same thing, the same thing. It can get boring at times, but we keep at it, we keep doing it because we know it is good. Okay? And we need to have that virtue of perseverance to keep doing it. What is one good application in our daily lives of the virtue of perseverance? School work, there you go, right? School work. We keep doing it every day, every day, every day, day in and day out. We do our school work and we need to persevere to do it well, right? And for those of you folks who are working, well, work. Work in your offices, in your factories, in your farms, wherever you are. War, work can get boring, but we need to persevere in our work. That's part of the virtue of fortitude right okay now so what are the things we need to avoid as part of the virtue of fortitude what are the things we need to avoid let me just go rattle off this thing a little bit faster now because it's about time number one is timidity or cowardice Ooh, I'm afraid I don't want to say a word I don't want to open my mouth because I might flop I might ruffle some feathers of people I might get some people mad I might make people uncomfortable if I say the truth if I speak out but that's cowardice, okay? cowardice, okay? and uh, 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 that's very bad. That's against the virtue of fortitude. Okay? When we need to speak out because we need to speak the truth, we have to speak the truth. Okay? Uh, and, and we cannot give excuses. Uh, many times our silence is complicity to uh, support what is wrong. And that in itself is wrong. Recklessness is another uh, wrong thing to have. Sometimes we think that, oh, we're strong. Oh, we can do anything. Oh, we're all powerful. We're all mighty. Oh, we just recklessly do things. That's what causes accidents. <laughs> that is uh, not using our head too well. Okay? So uh, being strong, being, uh, being perseverant, being uh, uh, patient, being, uh, uh, practicing fortitude does not mean being reckless in doing things. The other thing is presumption and vainglory. Presumption and vainglory are two other vices that are contrary to fortitude. Right? When we think 
we think too highly of ourselves. We think that we are the best. We think that we are so good. And we don't need God's help to do anything. We can do everything by ourselves. Well, that is presumption. Okay? Uh, and that is being vain. Right? We think that we are somebody all the time. And that everything good that we do depends on our strengths, our excellence, our perfection. Well, that is not quite true. Okay? Uh, not quite true. Okay, let us pray for the virtue of fortitude. As I said earlier, fortitude is not something that only happens with our own strength, with our own machismo, with our own, uh, you know, gung-ho attitude with life. No, now, it's not willpower, okay? No, it happens through the grace of God. So we have to pray for the grace of fortitude. We have to ask God to be strong in our faith. To be strong in defending the truth. To be a strong instrument to bring God into the different circumstances of our lives every day. And pursue, pursue what is good. Pursue what is good. That's what's important. And we need a virtual fortitude to do this. And nowadays, folks, the good is under attack in many ways. The Catholic faith in general is under attack in many ways. What else is under attack? The Eucharist is under attack. So many things are happening about the Eucharist. You've seen my posts about in the past about accidents uh, happening in the Eucharist. And that does not happen by accident. Okay, Those happen because we have done away with so many things that are traditional in the Catholic faith that cause those accidents to happen. Okay? We need to defend our Lord in the Holy Eucharist. We need to defend marriage. We need to defend the institution of the family. We need to de defend um, life. Eh? The issues of abortion, euthanasia, eh? uh, contraception. We need, to, we need to defend good in law. Eh? We've got so many laws that, are already, that have already distorted what is true and good in our lives. There are many of these things, folks, that we need fortitude for. We need a strength in the grace of God to speak the truth, to defend the truth, to do what is good. Let us pray for that. Let us not let the devil get the better of us, of our families, of our societies. Because the devil is in our midst and is very real. And we have to fight. We have to fight with all the strength that fortitude can provide us. Let's pray for it. Let's ask God for the grace of fortitude. Okay? That's it for us, folks. Have a good day. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.